Today on an all new Dr. Phil. Three years and all three are sober. My life has changed so much for the better. You gave me a life beyond my wildest dreams. I kept asking the staff to get me wine. They wouldn't do it. Dr. Phil saved my life. When she's sober, I could look into her eyes and I could see that my girl was there. I'm indebted to you and your staff for the rest of my life. You didn't give up. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. Today I am putting you on red alert because there is a crisis in our country and I'm talking about drug and alcohol addiction. It's an epidemic and it is killing and it is destroying families. No one is immune. There are over 28 million people who are addicted, some as young as 12 years old. But most shocking is that over 80% of those addicted never receive treatment. Now, I started the Dr. Phil show 16 years ago, and the first question I was asked is, what's this show going to be about? And I said I was going to dedicate this show to shining a spotlight on what I called the silent epidemics that were plaguing families in America. This is one of those epidemics. Now, over the years, we have received thousands and thousands of emails from parents, siblings, spouses, and children pleading desperately for help to save somebody they love from drugs and alcohol. I'm proud to say that we have helped nearly 500 guests with inpatient treatment for substance abuse. That's over $28 million in resources provided to these folks over the years. Never before in the history of television has a show ever done anything like that. But how are these guests doing now? Well, today we're going to find out. First, you'll remember sisters Valene, Amanda, and Tiffany. They were all addicted to heroin, and they were using together. They were triggering each other, sparking each other. Three sisters said doing heroin had created an unbreakable bond between them. And as long as they were together, nothing would or could keep them from using. Take a look. You'll remember them. I feel high now. Yeah. Really high. My daughters are heroin users. They're junkies. Mm -hmm. You sit there, you know, like a bunch of idiots. Both highs. Or... When we wake up in the morning, the first thing on our minds is to get high. It's like I'm married to it. As soon as it, like, goes through my veins, I just feel a hundred times better. You're high right now, right? Yeah. Where'd you get the drugs? Jersey. You brought them with you? How did you transport them? Bogus. Now I am going to go meet the 65-year-old man. This is how I make my money. I told them, you do not let anybody treat you guys like a piece of I would do that. I hate these guys, and this is what I resort to. I should have kicked them out. There's no doubt about it. I don't care you where they think? Are. Look at this. This is your home, Dad. They beat you down. Beat because you. you are weak. Grow a pair and be a man. Here's what has to happen. You're going to different places away from each other. You can turn this around. Well, it's been three years, and they are here, and I am proud to say one, two, three, all three of them are sober. Please welcome Valine, Amanda, and Tiffany. Come on out. Well, it's a... Uh... 
a happier day than the first time I met the three of you, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, you had a little different look in your eye when I met you last time. Uh, so, Valene, it's been almost three years. Where do you think you would be if you had not come here? I believe I'd be dead or wishing I was dead. My life has changed so much for the better. Yeah, life is good today. I want to thank you for having us back here. You know, it's definitely a different experience. And I mean, life, like I can actually live life today, yeah. you know, and experience it. We deal with real people in the real world and real life. And this isn't always a success only journey, right? And you've had a hiccup along the way, correct? Yeah. And you, you had a relapse what, three, four months ago? Yeah, almost three After months ago. After over two years of sobriety. Yeah. You're now back on track. You're three months clean and sober mm -hmm. again at this point. Um, I'm proud that you're back on the road. Yeah. And I'm behind you 100%. Yeah. What was your experience like being on the show? You know, I lived my life just trying to get what I wanted from everybody around me. And then when filming started, and then when I got here, it was the end of that, and I didn't know how to um, function without doing that. You were very annoyed. I wasn't getting over on anybody any, like, anymore. It was like having a babysitter, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Someone was with us at all times, checking on us, and it was annoying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've dealt with you guys before, and we know if we don't watch you and watch you close, you're very innovative. I just got out of jail, so I was like, look at <laughs> yeah. He's always watching me. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of felt like being back in jail. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, listen, awesome. you guys, I am so proud of you, and I, want, I wanted people to see you guys now because they're sitting there thinking, I can't do it. But they can do it, can't mm -hmm. they? Absolutely. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you say to somebody who's sitting there right now saying, this is too hard, I can't do it? My life is amazing now. It, all I did was just, I listened and I tried. Well, you guys are beautiful, and I'm, thank, thank you for being here. I really do. Thank you. All right, one guess I get asked about constantly is Brandy. She had been arrested at least 12 times, once for shooting up the bedroom of a man she dated with a 38 revolver. Mm. Now, her ex-husband, Victor, insisted Brandy's problems were all alcohol-related, but Brandy disagreed. Oh, Lord, how mercy. <laughs> all of my ex-wife's problems stem from alcohol and excessive drinking. Do I drink every day? No. Do I drink every other day? Yeah. Every time I drink, I break out in handcuffs. I mean, proof's in the pudding. Have you been drunk since you got here? Yes. Do you remember exposing yourself to my male staff? No. Which one? <laughs> oh, Jesus. About a year ago now, you're in a restaurant calling somebody a whore face and saying, here I am, bitch. You want a, you want a piece of me? In front of your child. Good job, I Mom. Have great parenting. Stop talking. You think you can dominate people and flap your mouth? You need to listen. You're an alcoholic. I um, think I am. You need serious, intensive, professional help with this. It is an opportunity, but I don't trust you. The feelings mutual. Be part of the solution or get the hell out of my way. Everything is completely different in my life since coming to the show. I have over 110 days in sobriety. I look like a different person and I feel like a completely different person. It's amazing. I regret how I behaved in front of the producers. I wanted alcohol really bad. I kept asking the staff members to get me champagne, wine. They wouldn't do it. I was in shock when Dr. Phil brought up the flashing incident. It made me see who I was at the time. I am completely grateful to Dr. Phil and his staff for everything they have done for me and continue to do for me. Without a doubt, Dr. Phil saved my life. Brandy, thank you for that update. I am so proud of how you're doing at this point. More amazing updates after the break. My parents have no idea that I'm using heroin. 
I'm really scared to tell them. Heroin? Really? <laughs> No one knows the struggle of addiction better than my next guest, Tiffany. Now, she absolutely shocked her father, Ken, when it was revealed on this stage that she was using heroin. My parents have no idea that I'm using heroin. I'm really scared to tell them. Right now, I'm spending up to $100 a day on heroin. You are a heroin addict, and you did heroin today, correct? Really? Heroin? You have no idea, as your dad, what, what that makes me feel. I just do it to feel normal. People think like, oh, doing drugs, fun, friends, partying. It's not. It's my survival. You've got somebody that is on self-destruct. Right. To continue that self-destruction, she needs funding. And so y'all make sure she has it. That is no different than if you went and bought it for her and gave it to her. This has disaster written all over it. No more coddling this kid. <laughs> Tiffany is here with her father, Ken, and I got to say, you look a whole lot better. <laughs> and you look a whole lot happier. Thank you, Dr. Phil, I, I just want to take two seconds and just, just share that, that our family is so grateful to what the Dr. Phil show and your staff Justin and everybody has, has provided to us. Um, we're totally convinced that if, if we hadn't been a part of your programs five years ago, that, that my daughter wouldn't be with us today. And, and, and I, I kid you not, when I, when I told Justin, if you need me to sweep the lots or park cars, I mean, I'm indebted to you and, and your staff for the rest of my life. Well, thank you for saying that. This was hard for you, right? I knew I wrote, I wrote to your show, and me coming on the show, it was like, winning the lottery, you know? So for me to go to treatment and um, <clears throat> and then mess up, and you said, you know, no, we're not gonna surrender to the disease. And I'm forever grateful for you for that. I, I have a little boy, I'm planning a wedding. My life is completely different today. And I'm so grateful. Yeah. Uh, that's just, that, is, that is so great because you are worthy and you're paying it forward by being here because there are people that relate to your story, saw what you've been through, saw what you had to face as a father. So God bless both of you for doing this. Right. Well, my next guest, Layla, said totaling her Lexus while driving 110 miles an hour while drunk did nothing to stop her from partying 24-7. Take a look. I love partying. Now we are on our way to a real party at a real club to have some real fun. Layla's partying is more important to her than anything. Layla is an absolute attention for. I equate drinking with having fun and being sexy. I like the drunk Layla. Look what I found. I have successfully wrecked four cars. She was completely obliterated and ran into a tree going 110 miles an hour. I didn't have a scratch on me. We get drunk till we black out, operate motor vehicles, and hit a telephone pole at 80. You think that's normal? I do know a lot of people who have totaled their cars as a result of drinking and driving, so I don't think it's that abnormal. Then you know a lot of moronic idiots. Well, there's somebody else I want you to meet. Tiffany was only 17 when a night of getting drunk, partying, ended up in this. The drunk friend who hit Tiffany's car was going 130 miles an hour and did not survive. Tiffany, come on out. It's a tragedy that someone else can be so selfish and inconsiderate of the damage that they can cause to someone else's life because of a night of fun that you won't even remember the next morning because you're so intoxicated. It's a miracle that I am here today and to relay a message of truth. And I can only beg you to listen. This is you. you. You get that, right? I don't know how to stop. There's a treatment center that specializes in young women. I want to go. Well, Joining us now is Layla, who I'm proud to say is over seven years sober. <laughs> wow. Uh, a little, little bit different now, huh? Yes. 
So what has changed? Okay, I'm having a baby. Yeah, I we got yeah. married and you gave me a life beyond my wildest dreams and I thank you for that. We had a pretty rough go in the beginning, right? Oh, yes. Because you had a tendency to kind of talk and dominate. You know, my parents were super soft. Um, I wasn't, I don't think I'd ever been told no my right. whole life. And right. it wasn't until I came on stage where you said, shut up, sit down, do what I say. Scared the crap out of me. What stuck with you? What woke you up in the moment? What was the real turning point for you? Um, probably bringing Tiffany on stage was definitely an eye yeah. opener. Um, I never considered hurting anybody else in my process. You know, I remember you saying that I was driving a 5,000 pound missile, mm -hmm. which was absolutely true. Yeah. Um, that, that scared me. No, I'm so mad at, I'm mad at myself still. You know, I look, I'm, I'm watching the recaps and I'm going, what are you thinking? Yeah. What are you doing? I was so out of my mind. I was yeah. just so selfish because I have the disease of alcoholism and I'm self-centered and selfish and I'm not thinking about anybody yeah. else. You're one of many people that said you felt like you could always reach out to the staff across time. Why did you feel that way? Well, everyone was, has always been very um, helpful here. And, you know, Justin, Andrea, I mean, people have reached out to me after making sure that I'm, I'm doing okay. Um, you know, I've come back to the show a couple of times and helped other young women. Yes, you have. Thank you for that. Yes. I've always felt supported. I know that if, God forbid, knock on wood, something were to happen, I know I could call Justin and we'd figure something out. Well, let's, in fact, Justin, come out here. Justin's over here. Come out here. Join us. Let me see that. Uh, this is the Justin that she's talking about. And, um, and likes to stay back there, not out here. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, he likes to be behind the camera, but too bad. So sad. Uh, so how long have you been here? Uh, since day one, before the stage was built. Yeah. I've often said people work here and they're paid, but... It's not about the money. Oh, not at all. Days like today are just fantastic. Seeing all the guests that I've worked with over the years, some like 12 years back, it's just seeing their families. I mean, it's, it's really remarkable. It's pretty yeah. amazing. Because I was 22 when, I'm start, when I started. Now, I have a wife. I have a son. I mean, it's great to see and grow together. It's, yeah. it's pretty cool. So what are you doing now? I've been doing admissions for treatment centers. So I'm an admissions counselor, so I help. Um, crisis situation. So I get calls all day long from uh, crying mothers. I get calls all day long from people that say, I can't do this anymore. Wow. I get calls all, and, and I can say, I, I get it. I understand what you're going through and here's what we can do to help. Right. Um, and then I also own a sober living home for women. Is that right? Yes. Okay. A little hard for them to con you, isn't it? Right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, no, they ain't, they ain't getting nothing by me. <laughs> yeah. I know all the tricks. But you didn't get around Justin. Um, no. She tried. Yeah. Tried. She tried. So how do, you, how do you keep these people corralled when they get here? What happens from day one, minute one? It happens before they even get out here. I mean, we alert the hotel to make sure that they know that there's someone that has an addiction issue coming, especially alcohol. Before they even come here, we'll alert security to let them know they need to check those bags really good to make sure and alert us if something's ever happened. And we keep tabs on them. I worked with Tiffany. We went, she even said we wouldn't let her go to the bathroom by herself. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's serious. We keep tabs. We stay on them. Yeah. They get meal vouchers, right, that yeah, they can you use? You can't use that for alcohol, only, only for food. Only That's for food, it. no 100%. alcohol. But you do make friends. You make associations. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of our past guests. You're happy that you're saving their lives. You're helping their families. Then you become friends and family. Very nice to have... Um, such a wonderful support system yeah. from, from, from the start. Well, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of our staff and how they handle all of this. More amazing updates when we come back. Marijuana is something that helps me relax. They want to hear me say I do other drugs, but I don't. Don't yell at me! Oh. Shut the f up! Now, my next guest, David, wrote to me saying that his 21-year-old daughter, Danielle, was spiraling out of control. He said not only did she have violent rages, she was also using drugs and driving under the influence. My daughter, Danielle, is a ticking time bomb. When I get mad, I rage. Shut the f up! What were you arrested for, Danielle? 
I was drunk in public. She's driving under the influence. She's getting into combat with people. I mean, something serious can happen here, right? And that's my concern, is, right. is something is going to happen, and it's going to happen soon. Marijuana is something that helps me relax. They want to hear me say I do other drugs, but I don't. I had suspicions. Um, I went into her room. She keeps her money in this, and, and that, that's her cocaine. I think your behavior is self-destructive. I think it's outrageous. I think it's often criminal, and it absolutely has to stop. You say nobody listens to you, nobody gets it, nobody understands? Look me in the eye. I do. I have a plan. I'm asking you to trust me to let us evaluate and give you some answers that you need. Will you do that for me? I can do it. Well, joining us in the audience is Danielle's father, David. So, David, thank you for being here. Thank you, sir. Tell us how she's doing. She is continuing uh, on her uh, on her path that you have her on, and, and uh, she's she's doing very well. I've had the opportunity to uh, visit my daughter along her journey. Mm -hmm. And she looks so different, Dr. Phil. It's somebody that I haven't recognized in many years. Oh. And I, I can't thank you enough. My family and I can't thank you enough for an opportunity for her to, uh, to get her life back. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because as you know, and I, I think we told you at the time, once they leave here and go into the treatment center, we take a completely hands-off approach. We don't get involved in their treatment. We step back and let the pros do what they do. They're there each day, they know. So getting a report from you is great for us because we like to hear what's going on. Uh, your staff is phenomenal. They were involved in every step. Yeah. Because of the situation with my daughter and why we were here, uh, it's necessary. Absolutely, just to ensure, um, you, you know, that uh, there's safety and that uh, people are doing the right thing. Well, that's the thing. It's just when we have somebody on drugs or alcohol coming in, we do stay on them close because, oh, yeah. A, they'll run. That's why it's so regimented. That's why it's so programmed. That's why you're never left alone for a second. Exactly. You know, just by the nature of where we are, you know, uh, Hollywood Boulevard, this area, uh, anybody can get anything at any time. It made me feel better yeah. as a father, as, as part of this, knowing that the care and attention was, was, was given our, yeah. our family and my daughter. Yeah, we have tractor beams we'll put on you. <laughs> we have to. She did heroin once and that was it. She was hooked. My greatest fear is that Nikki is possibly pregnant. I am pregnant. Do you know what can happen to this baby when it's been poisoned with these drugs? Closed captioning provided by... Today we're following up with some of our most amazing recovery stories in hopes they might inspire others struggling with addiction. Now, this show and guests on this stage are teaching tools for all of you watching at home. And those of you who see yourselves in their stories, well, Nikki was one of those stories. She went to living in a van and shooting up drugs every day, all while pregnant. Take a look. I use heroin every couple hours. It's pretty damn bad. Growing up, Nikki excelled at everything. She was the captain of the varsity cheerleading squad. She did heroin once, and that was it. She was hooked. I've been prostituting on and off now for about three years to support my habit. My greatest fear is that Nikki is possibly pregnant. I am pregnant. If I did try to detox right now, I not only would I get very sick, but it's a huge risk for the baby. Right now, she is really high. I'm so mad. <laughs> How could you do this to a baby? You do know that if the baby is born and survives, that the baby will be born addicted to heroin. Yeah. Your choice is right now, this minute. You get yourself clean to give this baby the best possible chance it has and give you the chance to get your life back. Yes, yes, I'll go, of course. <laughs>
Well, joining us now is Nikki, who is currently almost 13 months sober. So you have got a rub there. Right. What made you decide, I don't want this anymore? It wasn't me. I found nothing redeemable in myself at that point, right? My plan was to go into labor on the street, have my baby taken away from me, never tell my family, and like I felt like I was being so strong because I would bear that burden on my own. That was like how delusional I was. But I thought, you know, I'm given this opportunity, I will never get a chance like this again. Like I need to do this for this child at least. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Were you surprised that you came out of here with a plan? It's not like I haven't been to treatment before. I've been intervened, I've been sent to treatment. I was just, I didn't know what was gonna be different this time. So what was different? You asked me, you're like, you know, Nikki, like, why do you do this? Why do you do this? Is it because you didn't, like, I think you said something about my dad, like, is this? And I was like, you know what, Dr. Phil, I don't know. I don't know, and like, I'd been searching for a reason for 10 years, like, why do I do this? I don't know why I do this. And like, I got to Origins, and I got like, a proper education. I'm an alcoholic and a drug addict. That's the reason I get high. Like, bottom line. At this point, you are working to establish yourself in the eyes of the state, the court, the whole thing, where you can have custody, raise this child, do all the things that you want to do, right? Absolutely. Are you excited about that? I am. I'm excited. I've, you know, I've, I thought I could, like, will these things into existence for a long time. And, like, when I got here, I just didn't think it was possible. I didn't think there was any way I could possibly become a mother, become a functioning member of society. I didn't think it was possible. And all of a sudden, these things are just falling into place. They're just yeah. happening. Yeah. Because yeah. you're making them happen. What do you do, by the way? You have a job? I do. I work at a treatment center. Uh -huh. I, ma I manage a halfway house part-time for women. Um, yeah. <laughs> um. Well, I can't tell you how proud I am of you and how grateful I am that you come here and share this with everybody because someone where you were can look at this and say, if she can do it, then maybe I can do it. And that's what I want people to see. Me too. It's a good job. All right. Uh, next, she drove drunk six nights a week and was once found passed out behind the wheel in the middle of the road, just in the middle of the road. We'll find out how she's doing now after the break. Closed captioning provided by... Today I'm following up with some of our most talked about guests. Now, it's been years since I met Carly, who admitted to driving blackout drunk six nights a week. Not occasionally, six nights a week. Take a look. Dr. Fell, I only had four beers today, and I'm so drunk. My daughter Carly, she has a very severe drinking problem. Carly blacks out and gets behind the wheel of a car and drives. Six nights a week, I do drink and drive. I can drink 16 beers. You are concerned that she's going to kill herself or somebody else. You've been passed out in the middle of the road with the keys in the ignition and didn't know how you got there. Yes. Predict the future for me. What's going to happen? If I don't stop what I do, my luck's going to run out. I'm going to kill myself or somebody else in an accident. You need to be in rehab before the sun sets tonight. Are you going? I'm going. Well, well, joining us now is Carly, who was here 11 years ago, and you have now seven years in a row sober, right? Yes. Congratulations on that. So, how is life? Life is phenomenal today. Um, I am now a married woman, yeah. and I have two beautiful baby boys, yeah. and um, I am just living life, and um, living life, actually, now. You know, one of the things that we do here is we, we document stories. We don't become part of the story, we document stories, because you see people shooting up or whatever, we don't ever ask anybody to show us what they do. We don't ever ask them to shoot up or certainly drive drunk or whatever. We sent you a camera, yes. and you documented yourself. You made a diary. And now, as you look at it with two children, yes. and look at that as though it's another person out there, 
How would you look at that person today? Looking back on how I used to, um, how I used to live and how I used to act, it's so so self selfish of me to put myself and other people in harm's way. I hated your behavior, <clears throat> but I saw through that at the time and said to you that I really felt like you were a good person. That. I, I, did, I sensed that in you, and I told you that at the time. Did you okay. believe me? Um, that was probably the one and only thing I remember from the show. Really? Um, that really stood out to me, and you made me feel like I was actually worth saving. You made me realize that I was just very sick, and I just needed a lot of help, which you provided, and thank you for that. Because mm. if it wasn't for you who planted the seed um, for me 11 years ago, I would be dead today for well. certain. But I did feel that way, and I will pat myself on the back about this. I was right, wasn't I? Yes, sir. Because look at you now. Yes, sir, you are. I wish Justin was still out here because I love him. Well, um, Justin, come on out here. <laughs> come on out here. <laughs> the years burn, we were talking about you. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> So you were saying about Justin? Yes, Justin is awesome. Um, <laughs> oh, what? Come on. Just, uh, he is. He is. Um, I know. He, he's who I dealt with um, the last time, 11 years ago, and this time, him and Andrea both. Um, right. They've been phenomenal. But um, I know that whenever he came to, he personally came into my dressing room today and just sat there and we chatted like we were best friends. Yeah. It's a growing, like you said earlier, you know, it's where we're in this together, all of us, you and him and all the producers and, you know, it's, it takes a team. We really appreciate you and we appreciate you being here now. Thank you for having me. Right, it's such an honor. All right. Even though I've had open heart surgery and a pacemaker, Put in, I'm still getting high. My hearts are breaking, baby. But you don't have any idea how it hurts and how deep it hurts. Okay, now, Bethany's parents, Clyde and Charlotte, were desperate to save her life, but despite open heart surgery and a pacemaker, Bethany said nothing could stop her from using drugs. Drugs are more important to Bethany than anything else, even herself. A couple days after Christmas, they put her into a medical-induced coma for about 10 days. The doctors realized she had a major leakage in one of her valves. Bethany got a pig heart valve. Also, the doctors end up installing a pacemaker. Even though I've had open heart surgery and a pacemaker put in, I'm still getting high. It breaks my heart. She's just been out of the hospital a very short time. Yeah. You know, they say once they operate on a heart, that if you go back to drugs, you'll die. I have definitely resorted to things to get drugs. I worked at a strip club. I've done sexual favors for guys in order to get drugs. It's reality time, Mom. She's doing sexual favors for money, stripping, larceny. Where did you think she was getting the money? I had no idea. Have you gotten high today? Mm -hmm. You brought heroin on the plane with you here, right? Mm -hmm. Our hearts are breaking, baby. But you don't have any idea and how deep it hurts. And it seems life and you don't really care. And we just want the Bethy that cares. The only chance that you have is not to treat your addiction, but to treat you. I don't want to live like this anymore. Well, joining us is Bethany, her mother Charlotte, and her father Clyde. And Bethany is nine months sober as she sits here today. So, how do you feel? I feel really good. Yeah? yeah? You feel good physically as well? Physically, mentally. You, you're nine months sober, and you were pretty deep into this. What was the hardest thing digging out? Um. Probably just accepting um, where I was, like where yeah. I came from, and um, starting over. You were really held accountable for the first time. Yeah. And you had always been able to manipulate before, but that kind of came to an end, right? Yeah. It was, it was frustrating for me. Um, what? Being, like, stopped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that had to happen, right? Yeah, for sure. 
what do you guys think of what she's done and where she is at this point? I am totally thrilled to have my daughter back. She's just not the same child. You can look in her eyes and, and see there's a, there's a different young lady in there now. Yeah. Clyde, how about you? Uh, this was hard for you to see at the time and, and face at the time. A, a couple of things, Doc. As bad as my heart hurt for the pain of what she was doing, after looking into her eyes when she's sober, I could see them, that my girl was there and I could have a conversation with her, a normal conversation. And I want to thank you. I want to tell you that God uses men to help people. He, no, listen. And God had used you to help get my girl to a place where she could get help. So we want you to know that we thank you for helping, but first of all, we thank God for doing it. Yeah. We really do. Don't want to defame you because you're a good man. Yeah. I mean that. And from my family, I want you to know that we're very grateful to you and we thank you very much. Well, I appreciate you saying that and, and trust me, I, I tell you for certain, I, I pray really hard that God gives me the wisdom and the words that I need to say the things that I need to say. Uh, um, I, I felt like we were at a real end of the rope with you. I kind of felt like if I let her walk out of here and not have a plan and a commitment, I, I felt like she d seriously might die. You made a great decision, that's all I can tell you. Yeah. We appreciate it. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm really proud of you, and I want you to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Now, my next guest, Jamie's family, claimed that she was injecting cocaine and taking an opiate, anything she could really get her hands on. Take a look. In ninth grade, Jamie started using Percocets. Percocets. Smoked marijuana. Cocaine. Injected cocaine. She smokes crack. We are here to fight for Jamie's life. We're all going to be here ready to intervene on her. Get off! You need this! Wait, 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 wait. Jamie, get off! Stop. Stop. I'm not. Okay. Call 911. The family was trying to do an intervention. She is completely out of control. Likely what's going to happen is she will go from here to the hospital. They'll call what's called like a psych response team to get an evaluation. In this intervention, you've got a 15-year-old son over here who is taking the lead, and you're standing in the background saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The only time is now, and she deserves a future. Well, Jamie has been in rehab for four days now. Uh, she called her mom last night. What did she say to you, Kim? She said, I just want to say thank you for getting me here. Well, so how is Jamie doing now? Well, she is six years and nine months sober today. Um, she's also the proud mother of a six-year-old daughter, Sophia. Now, I want to comment on some of the things that you just saw. Um, there is an intervention protocol that we have on drphil.com, and it kind of gives you the step-by-step uh, way to prepare for and then execute an intervention if you're going to do one at home. And it is different than what you just saw. And I'll tell you why. Uh, now there was an interventionist there, Debbie Noss and her son Brandon, who you may remember we did an intervention with many years ago here on the stage. But what you saw happen there is sh Jamie went ballistic, right? and her brother decided to control her. And you'll notice nobody from Dr. Phil or Debbie or Brandon touched her at all, because we don't do that. We don't wrestle people, we don't do that. Our intervention protocol, which you can find on drphil.com, will tell you, keep things calm, keep things safe, and if, and if you need to, you do exactly what Debbie did. More amazing updates when we come back. Closed captioning provided by... While preparing this show, we received letters of thanks from people who say their lives have been touched by the sobriety of some of the guests here today. We got a letter about Layla. 
met when I was going through an intensive outpatient program. She helped a very scared girl get out of my comfort zone and learn how to love myself again. I don't think a day goes by that she doesn't reach out her hand to help someone else. So thank you for what you gave to her, to me, and to the world. Sincerely, Kendra. Um, and then talking about Carly. Uh, I met Carly 12 years ago, 10 days into my sobriety. I went home after my treatment was over and started using again. Once again, Carly was solid and an inspiration to me. Her honesty and compassion without judgment helped me on my journey. And for that, I am forever grateful and signed Ava W. So, you know, these guys are paying it forward and touching lives out there, which I'm so glad to see. Look, I want to thank all of my guests for sharing their amazing stories of success and recovery. We don't do this very often, but I thought it would be fun to just look in and see how some of these folks are doing. For more amazing stories of recovery, go to drphil.com. Thank you for being here today. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.